Hello everyone, in about 5 minutes, I'll be walking us through last minute exam tips. The first thing to know is you have to be calm. Examination is just a test. It is to put you to a test and know if you have been studying as a student. So, be calm. I hear this a lot from students. They are always panicking when it comes to examination. Be calm. Panic and lose it all. You don't have to panic. The last thing you want to do is to panic because your exam is around the corner. Believe me, don't panic. Panicking is the last thing you want to do because it definitely will distort you from studying properly. Worrying doesn't change anything. You don't panic. No fear. During the process of the exam, fear should be far away from you. You don't fear. Prepare for it. You have to do the needful, get your materials dusted, invest your time in getting prepared, preparing your mind for your exam. Getting prepared is very important. Getting prepared for the exam is very important. And there are things you have to do to ensure you are prepared by telling yourself no fear, by preparing your mind that you are not scared, that you are not panicking. And get resources, get useful resources. Study, invest time in studying, and with this, you can be sure that you are ready for your exams necessary things you have to put in place necessary things get your materials read your materials with necessary resources get your writing materials available get your exam pass ready your exam pass should be ready and available at all time be time conscious both in the exam or both when both Preparing. In preparation for your exams, you have to be time conscious. While writing your exam, you have to be time conscious. And preparing for your exam, how can you be time conscious? You can be time conscious by setting your priorities. You have to set your priority. You have to make your priority right. Timing. Make sure you are following your plans be time conscious and while writing your exam you have to be time conscious there is a time attached to every question there is a time limit to how much you can attempt your questions it's usually located at the top corner of your computer there's a time counting down at the top corner of a computer so you have to ensure you are time conscious. You attempt questions you are sure of. The ones you are not sure of, you can move on, leave it behind and get back to it later. You need to be time conscious. Many students have the complaint of being locked out before they finish attempting their question. So you have to go all out for the questions you are sure of. You don't have to spend more than five seconds if it's not calculation. You don't have to spend more than five seconds, max eight to ten seconds on each question. If you come across a question you are not sure of, just move ahead to the next question and you can always come back for it. Make sure you don't spend max ten seconds on each question. Your time counts down the moment you input your details and your questions are being displayed on the screen. So you need to be time 
conscience. Just as we have established previously, this is a tool you'll be using for your exam. You have to know that this is just a tool and it will respond to the information, it will respond to the instruction you give to it. As soon as you have it functioning, then you impute your details and as soon as you have done that, your details should be your student identification number, which is the matriculation number, and your pass trick could be in blocks and you could have all the letters in block number. The NOU should be in block, password and your matric number is correct. And you have your questions displayed before you. Your time starts counting the moment you attempt those questions. So you have no time to waste. Navigate through the system by using the sensor. The sensor controls the cursor, which we will get to know more as we continue. This is a tool that will make your exam seamlessly interesting. As soon as you have this functioning properly, internet connected, impute your details and you can have, as you can see, the tool here, that here is the sensor just below that's the sensor there. And that's what you use to control and move your cursor all around your interface user friendly you just have to know what you want to do and how you want to do it it will give you everything you need as you navigate through your questions seamlessly is the navigation key we have the arrow pointing up the arrow pointing left up right and downward you have to be careful when using this key if you are attempting a question and you have the cursor on the question. Please be careful not to use this navigation key because the navigation keys will change your answers. I've seen student complaints. I've heard student complain to me about this not once, not twice. So you have to be careful. Use the sensor to move around the system. Use it to give instructions. Please do not. You can apply this key if your sensor is off the question you are attempting. Let me break this down well. If you are attempting a question, for example, question one, your, your cursor is on the, the colon where the question is slated. After choosing your answer with the cursor, make sure you move the cursor away from the question if you want to use this navigation key. But I would strongly suggest you don't use the navigation key, just use your sensor all along. Use your sensor to move around so you don't end up switching your answers. As you can see, you got the navigation key. The navigation key, you have to be very careful about them. You have to be if you are not so fluent using the computer careful of this key so you have a keyboard you have a keyboard with its functions and it has and what you use to navigate through the computer um, this, this is going to be a quick one if you have a question that starts with a sub objective a question that starts with a sub objective it will has to be that the first alphabet if your answer is to be tall t-a-l-l -L, the first letter which is t has to be in block and the letter that follows can be in small letters but the first one should be in block we have the cursor, this is where the computer on what it should do cursor to select your answer and if you want to scroll down there is a page bar by the side of the system which you will place the cursor on and move to the next page. Cursor is basically going to do the major work 
you would be required to see we have or back so you use as you can see the arrow is pointing at it is where you place you place your cursor on the side bar as you will be scrolling down or up the interface good to go stay calm be in charge good to go i hope this video will help and put you in the right state of mind as you prepare for your exam. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.